Hello there. In a previous five-part video series, we developed a function that was able to read in a NetSell spreadsheet containing time series data. We uh, converted that into a pandas data frame, and uh, not only that, but we created valid variable names from the column descriptions. And what I mean by valid variable names is that it can be used in SAS datasets and other statistical packages. We are now going to use our function to create two time series data frames with valid variable names and then plot both of them on the same graph so we can do a comparison of the two time series. So I have now saved the function as valid underscore variables dot pi y. So it's uh, in its own Python program. So to use it in the current program, we have to make sure that we have saved this program in the same directory as the valid underscore variables dot pi y program. And to actually use it within this current program I'm going through, what we need to do is issue the command from valid underscore variables without the dot pi y, import remove underscore invalid underscore characters, which is the function that we developed. So that's that function here. Now that we have imported the function, we need to import pandas as pd. We also need to import the matplotlib libraries to allow us to do the graphing. So we need to do import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. That will do the actual plots. Import matplotlib.dates as mdates. That will produce the major tick marks on the x-axis and then from matplotlib.ticker import auto minor locator. That will automatically produce the minor tick marks in between the major date uh, marks. So now we're going to define our function and it's going to be called calc underscore pct underscore plot and what we're going to be doing here is actually plotting percentage change for each of our time series. The reason to do that is, uh, as an example, with labour force total employment, that's around 12 million in Australia, whereas uh, job vacancies in Australia reaches a maximum of about 200,000. So if you were to plot those two numbers on the same graph, the graph would not look very good. And here's an example of what it looks like. So here you can see that the labour force total employment is way up here, whereas uh, job vacancies is way down here. So there's no way you can make a sensible comparison between the two time series. Another reason we are interested in percentage change is to see whether a change in level over time in one time series leads to a change in level over time for another time series. So next we're going to define the parameters for our function. So we have two time series data sets, data set 1 and data set 2. We also define a start date and an end date for our time series. One of the reasons we do that is that um, the labour force survey s started in 1978, whereas the job vacancy survey started in 1979. So you want to start in 1979 so that um, JVS lines up with your labour force survey. Also, another reason you might want to do that is there's a lot of points that you, you'll be plotting if you started from 1979 all the way to 2017. So you might want to focus in on a particular time span. And so you can do that by specifying the start date and end date. So the next thing we need to do is define the variable parameters that we're going to feed in. And we have variable 1 for time series 1, variable 2 for time series 2. But also, you may notice, we have invert var 1 and invert var 2. The reason we have that is the cases where if one time series is rising, the other time series may be falling in response. 
So they'll be effectively opposite to each other. So a solution is to actually invert one of the variables so that um, you have a side-by-side -side comparison, which is a lot easier to do than if they were opposite to each other. So we then now define the period of our percentage change. So the reason we do that is, in this example, the job vacancy survey is a quarterly survey, whereas the labour force survey is a monthly survey. So to make a valid comparison, we need to take the percentage change for every third month of labour force. This will turn it into a quarterly percentage change. So in that case, for labour force, we would define the period as three, and the period for the job vacancy survey would be just one. So the last three parameters of this function relate to the graph. So we have graph title, graph subtitle, and we have this month underscore int. This is the the uh, interval between months for the major date tick marks. So if you make that 12, that would be every year you have a tick mark. So I'm going to wrap it up uh, here, and in the next part we'll look at the main program and how that works. And if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and, uh, and subscribe. That would be great. Thank you.